very famous critic of psychology cr criticized the practice of psychology quite effectively in the, I believe in the early 60s The Myth of Mental Illness by Thomas Sazz, S-Z-A-S-Z -S -Z. It's a classic, you should read it If you're interested in psychology, read it Like, it's, it's a classic And he basically said Most people have problems in living, they don't have psychological problems And so I've experienced, despite my love for the psychoanalysts Very frequently what I'm doing as a therapist is Helping people have a life that would work You know, and you can parameterize that It's like, what do you need? How about some friends? That, people kind of like that How about an intimate relationship with someone that you can trust That maybe has a future? That'd be good How about a career that puts you in a dominance hierarchy somewhere So at least you've got some possibility of rising Some possibility of stabilizing yourself And a schedule and a routine Because no one can live without a routine you just forget that, if you guys don't have a routine I would recommend, like, you get one going Because you cannot be mentally healthy without a routine You need to pick a time to get up Whatever time you want, but pick one and stick to it Because otherwise you dysregulate your circadian rhythms And they regulate your mood And eat something in the morning I had lots of clients who've had anxiety disorders I had one client who was literally starving very smart girl she, There was very little that she liked She kind of tried to subsist on like half a cup of rice a day She came to me and said I have no energy, I come home All I want to do is watch the same movie over and over what, Like, is that weird? And I thought, well it depends on how hard you work You know, it's a little weird, but whatever It's familiar, you're looking for comfort So I did an analysis of her diet It's like three quarters of a cup of rice It's like, you're starving Eat something you know, you'll feel better So, she modified her diet and all her anxiety went away and she had some energy It's like, yeah, you gotta eat <laughs> So, a schedule, that's a good thing, man Your brain will thank you for it It will stabilize your nervous system With a bit of a plan, that's a good thing You need a career, you need something productive to do with your time You need to regulate your use of Drugs and alcohol, most particularly alcohol, because that does in a lot of people You need a family, like the family you have, your parents and all that It'd be nice if you all got along, you could work on that, that's a good thing to work on And then, you know, you probably need children at some point, and that's life That's what life is You know, you may have a good reason to not be operating on one of those dimensions It's not mandatory But, I can tell you that if you're not operating Reasonably well on four, I think I mentioned six If you're not operating reasonably well on at least three of them There's no way you're going to be psychologically thriving And that's more pragmatic in some sense than psychological, right? When my clients first come to see me, one of the things I often ask them is Okay, well let's say you look a year ahead, what do you want? What are we aiming at? Your life isn't the way you want it to be how would it look if it was the way you wanted it to be? Or at least partly that way And we aim at that, right? And we look for impediments Psychological impediments, fears, avoidance strategies, that sort of thing And we develop strategies And we try to move towards that, I would say, ideal You're trying to accomplish something, say if you go see a psychotherapist You know, you could say, well I'm trying to get healthy but, you know, that's not really right What you're trying to do when you go see a therapist is get your life together And that's not the same thing, you know, like Mostly when I'm acting as a therapist, it's not like I'm directly treating mental disorder Like, mental disorders aren't, they're just not neat little boxes It's not like someone has a fully functioning life, but they have an anxiety disorder And then you bring them and you treat the anxiety disorder and they go back to their fully functioning life It's like, it's not like that at all the disorder is tangled out into their life You know, if you're depressed Well, usually your, your workplace isn't going very well And your relationships with the people around you are damaged And, you know, you're connected in the actual world With all of these things And so, when you come to see a therapist You have to work on putting your life together in a sustainable manner And that's certainly not just removing the mental illness It's very rare, now and then you see someone who's depressed Whose life is together, and they're just depressed Something's gone wrong, probably biochemically And so, 
with someone like that, you can often give them SSRIs. I can't give them to them, but I can recommend them. Recommend they go see a doctor, anyways. And uh, that sometimes just does the trick because you know their life is actually pretty good. They just can't see it, but that's bloody rare, man. It's usually the case that someone comes and sees you and things are in a serious state of chaos and all of that has to be addressed and some of it's psychological and a lot of it's just practical, it's embedded out there in the world human beings have a nature there's things we need and if we have them, well that's good and if we don't have them, well then we feel the lack and so behaviorists, behavioral psychologists concentrate a lot more on that sort of thing you know, it's practical, it's like strategizing Make a career plan, figure out how to negotiate, because that's bloody important Figure out how to say what you need Figure out how to tell the truth to people Figure out how to listen to your partner in particular Because if you listen to them, they will actually tell you what they want And sometimes you can give it to them, and maybe they'll return the favor And if you practice that for like 15 years Well, then maybe you're constantly giving each other what you want Well, hooray, that would be good and then there's two of you, under most circumstances, and it's better to have two brains than one because people think differently because of their temperament, mostly and so, the negotiation is where the wisdom arises and it's part of the transformation, the psychological transformation that's attendant on an intimate relationship and one of the fundamental purposes of a long-term intimate relationship Anyways, when that falls apart, chaos ensues, and that's why chaos is represented so continually in myths and stories. 